Okay, I'm just about to head to the pool for a swim. I have my bag here packed and ready to go. Although you may notice this is a rather large bag. So other than just a swimming costume, a pair of goggles and a towel, what on earth do I have packed in this bag? And I'm sure you've seen many other people going to and from the swimming pool with similarly sized bags. But I consider everything in this bag to be pretty essential. So here are my swim kit essentials. All right, so before we head to the pool, let's open this bag up, run through a couple of the basics to start off with. So I've got my trunks or a costume. I would very much recommend a set of those. Um, a towel for, well, before you can keep warm in it and also obviously for after, pretty essential. And then we have goggles and caps. Now I often actually pack a couple of goggles just in case for whatever reason, a set of goggles breaks, leaks, um, or I've lost them previously. So you've got a backup pair. Also same with the cap. They do often split and in some parts of the world, they are mandatory in the pools. Right, so that's some of the basics. And now on to my first bit of real essential kick that I never go to a swimming pool without. It is a pool boy. And we really need Fraser here because he is rarely seen swimming without one of these. Now the idea of these is they're essentially a buoyancy aid. So these in particular go between your thighs, up towards the top, so sort of in this region here, right up in your crotch. Um, and the idea is that you don't use your legs or you minimize your kick as much as possible. And that means that then you're really focusing on your arms, working on your technique there, but also by not using your legs, you don't get the propulsion from your legs. So actually it also makes your arms work a little harder. They're brilliant also for some drill work, skull work, because it then just allows you to focus on the technique, focus on the skull without worrying about just simply staying afloat. Also, if you're someone that drags your legs along the bottom of the swimming pool and you really struggle with that, then a boy, pool boy can really help there. And actually some people find they swim faster with a pool boy. I just say, don't use it all the time. Do try swimming as well without, so it's not a total shock. And for triathletes out there, a pool boy can mimic sort of the effect of a wetsuit and that buoyancy that you get in the legs. So also just a nice way of practicing that kind of position in the water without having to put a wetsuit on in the swimming pool. Right now onto the next bit of kit, the kickboard or the kick float. And this is almost the flip reverse of the pool boy. It's still a buoyancy aid, but rather than isolating the arms, we're now isolating the legs. So you essentially just hold on to the kickboard. You may have some little handles in there or hold on to the top, or you can even hold on to the bottom. I normally like holding on to the entire board so you can rest on it. And that allows you then to isolate the legs and kick them and build up strength in them or just get used to that kicking action, particularly if you're a novice. That can be quite difficult getting that sort of movement from the hips all the way down to that flexibility through the ankles. Personally, I just like the kickboard because I get bored of just looking at that black line in the bottom of the swimming pool. And it's quite nice just to grab the kickboard every so often, have a little look around, have a bit of a break from just having your head down in the swimming pool. But like I said, brilliant tool for building up the strength of your kick and getting used to that action. So if you are starting out with this, maybe include it into your warm ups and your warm downs initially, and then you can build in some proper kick sets with time. Right, and the next bit of kit again, we have the paddles. I've actually got a broken set here from a recent swim run accident, but use this one here. And very simply, a swim paddle increases the surface area of your hand and therefore the resistance as you're pulling through the water. These are fantastic. I absolutely love using these basically almost like a progression of the pool boy and building up that strength in your arms and making you more robust as a swimmer. They're not for everyone. Some people do hate these. And I would say if you're starting out with paddles, build up gradually. You can get different sizes of these. So start with a small one, get used to that first and then start building up in size. I think they're also fantastic because not only do they increase resistance by virtue of that they also slow your stroke down so it means that you can really focus on your technique so get that catch you can feel that catch really nicely and you can see where your hands and your arm are moving quite visibly so these are one of my favorites in the kit okay next bit again moving on we have 
the fins or the flippers and these are just relatively stubby flippers these aren't kind of like the scuba diving flippers you may see but these are brilliant for the swimming pool and a bit like the paddles they basically increase the surface area of your feet so they increase the resistance but also the propulsion from your legs now i actually often recommend these to people when they're first starting out or they're really focusing on their technique because it allows you to work on that technique really focus on that without having to worry about staying afloat you can kind of just easily propel yourself forward with the fins also if you are trying to strengthen up your legs obviously fantastic because it does increase the resistance and how much you're propelling yourself through the water but also if you are someone that does struggle with your kick maybe it's because you've got inflexible ankles particularly if you've come from like running football often have quite stiff ankles so you struggle with that kick because you've got quite stiff ankles and the fins just very gradually and naturally flex your ankles and stretch them out with time and moving on we've got a couple of optional extras so one of which is the snorkel as you can tell this isn't your normal kind of snorkel you use when you go in the sea and look at the fishes this one is a specific swimming one so it comes straight over the center nice and streamlined so you can just crack on and swim but the idea of these primarily is to allow you to focus i'm going to take this off now is to focus on your technique so it allows you to just focus on your arm movement your catch your pull without having to worry about the rotation the breathing and everything quite so much so they're really good particularly if you're starting out swimming trying to hone in that technique and actually i used to use these a lot i'll be honest i don't pack this all the time as i said optional extra one other is the neoprene shorts now these are brilliant actually they've become really popular as of late kind of like the pool boy but without having to wear the pool boy now a lot of people wear these all the time now i would say don't rely on them fully but obviously what they do is help to lift your legs and your hips in the water which is something a lot of people struggle with emulate that wetsuit to a degree um, interestingly josh amberger one of the best swimmers within triathlon actually admitted to wearing these quite a lot particularly after hard bikes and runs when his legs are toast and he just needs to survive the swim so yeah like i say another optional extra all right that's pretty much all the kit bar one last thing a bottle now i will go through pretty much this entire bottle within a swim if not more on some occasions and i'll probably drop an electrolyte tablet some squash or something in there some people barely drink a thing when they're swimming but honestly I can't survive without it. Like I said, I'm off to the pool right now, so that's it. My bag's empty, it's done. But if I was off swimming open water right now, I may want to pack a wetsuit. Obviously, if you're lucky enough to live in a warmer climate and be swimming in warmer waters, you may not need a wetsuit. But the primary aim and goal of a wetsuit is to keep you warm. It's that added extra layer that's gonna trap some warmth in there. But an added bonus and benefit of them, we use the buoyancy shorts as an example here, because the neoprene's nice and thick and it's kind of like this foamy material, it traps air in it and that actually helps to increase your buoyancy and lifts you in the water. So if you were to compare yourself wearing a wetsuit in the swimming pool versus not wearing a wetsuit in the swimming pool, you'll find, hopefully, that you swim faster in a wetsuit because you are lifted in the water and it reduces your surface area and drag through the water. So it does take a little bit getting used to because like I say, your body position is different. So do try them out a little bit uh, before maybe heading to a race. Now, if you are wearing a wetsuit, you're gonna need something like a body glide to help reduce any chafing or any rubbing, particularly around the neck region when you're moving your head. Uh, body glide is a non-petroleum based balm, which is recommended. Personally, I used to use stuff like baby oil and Vaseline, which is advised against because it is petroleum based and can degrade the neoprene. Personally, never noticed anything over all the years of using it myself, but yeah, like I said, I would recommend using body glide. Another thing you may want to consider for the open water, and I definitely use a lot these times of the year in the UK is a skull cap or a neoprene cap. I haven't got one here today, but it goes on over your head and sometimes it detaches around the neck region around your chin. And again, just keeps your head nice and warm and stops you from getting that kind of classic ice cream head when you jump in the cold water. There we go. I think that's pretty much everything today. If I've missed anything, or there's anything that you can't live without when you're swimming, please drop it down in the comment section below. If you've enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up, give it a like, don't forget to head on over to our GTN social media channels, give them a follow, and if you're not doing so already, give us a little subscribe down below.